Hello and welcome everyone to our second edition of the full Wyckoff class, okay? So today I hope you guys haven't Wyckoffed alone. I hope you guys reserve that right uh, to do only during the, these classes, but nonetheless I think uh, it is a very interesting topic, okay? So, alright, let's go right to our book. So if you haven't uh, watched the first episode, we talked about basic accumulation structures, okay? We haven't gone into, you know, the specific phases and what characterizes each stage and phase, but we have gone into what is accumulation. And today we're going to talk a little bit about basic distribution structures, and we're also going to talk about the first fundamental law, according to Richard Wyckoff, which is the law of supply and demand. Okay, so let's dive right into it. So first, the basic premise of a distribution is for the large traders, the large holders, you know, institutions, which is the way people usually refer to them, distributing from their stock to the retail traders. Okay, so the basically the institutions are selling to the retail traders and that's what characterizes a distribution okay a distribution not you know it doesn't mean that it is the absolute top uh, a stock or a security or reach in you know a long long time but it does represent a major change of character during a trend okay so if we look at this structure here what we see as Ryan has said in many of his videos about Wyckoff theory and whatnot, is that first you have this trend here, which is going up, right? Going up a lot. And everyone is thinking this is going to go to the moon. But in reality, that trend gets stopped, but the narrative continues. The narrative behind that trend continues, even though the trend is just going sideways. Just like we saw on Bitcoin when we were around here. Okay, so you have a big uptrend and then that trend stops and then you just go sideways as the large holders distribute. All right. Now, the first event that we see is the change of character. And this is, you know, the most important event uh, I would like you to notice is when, you know, it stops just going up and up and up and up and up and starts this sideways trend. Okay, because this basically means that the hype is still on, as I said, but the the trend is not because there's a lot of selling pressure introduced, okay? Now, we can see that it's not, you know, just pure sideways. No, no trend is just, you know, completely linear, okay? It tests the top of the range and it tests the bottom of the range. It tests the top of the range and then it tests the bottom of the range. And it keeps testing those ranges, you know, the top and the bottom of the range, until, you know, the large traders have distributed all of their stock. All right? So this is the main thing. Now, we have two basic structures, okay? And you're going to see them just now. So the first basic structure is this here. When you have an ultimate test, you know, the final test that goes just a tiny hair above the previous test of the top of the range, and then it breaks down and everything, you know, goes to hell. And then you have a secondary structure that has no ultimate test, okay? And this is, you know, kind of similar to the accumulation structures. So if we go back to the accumulation structures, you have the first accumulation structure, which has, you know, a spring below here. And then we have a secondary accumulation structure with the, which doesn't have the spring. Now, this usually means that, you know, since the accumulation structure is, you know, the second accumulation structure is usually during a, a setting of strong, you know, strength in the markets. This usually is in a point of weakness in the markets, okay? When there's a lot of uncertainty, okay? So... You know, it's basically the inverse reasoning, as I said, for the accumulation structure too. All right. So, you know, I don't want to dive into, you know, what what each specific phase of this structure means, what each of these points mean, because that is something we're going to do 
Uh, let me just check on the book index here, but it's like way, way onto the course. So we're going to look at this in basically chapter five and chapter six. I think this will be like the 10th, maybe some mod maybe some more classes ahead because we have a lot to talk uh, about still. Okay. So let's go to the law of supply and demand according to Richard Wyckoff. Okay. So basically, um, what Richard Wyckoff says is that supply and demand is a basic law of economics, right? Everyone knows that. And if you're in crypto for any amount of time, probably you've heard that Bitcoin has a limited supply. And so if the demand uh, grows or stays the same, then it eventually trends up. Okay. This idea is, as the book author states, very general. Okay. And you should be nuanced in it because, you know, just because price is going up, it doesn't necessarily mean that there are more buyers than sellers, okay? Let me show a practical example here. If we go to Coinalyze and we check the Bitcoin chart, let me just load this here. There's an indicator here, which is called, let me just hide these other indicators, which is called the buy sell pressure. And it measures buy sell pressure basically by measuring the buying volume and the selling volume. Now you can see that it's usually correlated to the price going up or going down. If we look at, at just the difference between the two, but sometimes price can still go down when there are more buyers and sellers. Okay. As we can see here. And price can still go up when there are more sellers than buyers, as we can see around here. Okay. So it's not a perfect correlation and it should be no nuanced. Okay. All right. So the basic theory is that, and when we apply it to the markets, one thing that we can look at is the order book. Okay. This is a very basic feature of exchanges. I think Coinalyze also has like an aggregated order book, just so I can show you guys. Let's see. Um, no, it doesn't. Then maybe I think TRDR. Yeah. TRDR.io. Let me just sign in. Sign in. Boom. Okay. Okay. Don't show again. I don't care. So this is the order book for Bitcoin. We have a bid column, which is, you know, uh, buying orders and we have an ask column, which is selling orders. Okay. And you can see, you know, TRDR does a very, very nice job and it is very pretty to look at, but let's look at the new ones on this. Okay. So first, this is a little bit of a different model, but the price that the asset is being traded at is the last crossing price between someone wanted to sell and someone wanting to buy. Okay. This is the last point at which price was traded. And, you know, the thing is, the only thing that shows up in this, these columns here are limit orders, which, you know, if you don't know, we have some trading basics classes and you can refer to them. Okay. So we have bid orders. We have, these are all limit orders on the buy side. They are bid orders. And on the sell side, they are ask orders. Now, the thing is these orders by themselves, they cannot move the market. Okay. Because they are limit orders. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because if you just place a limit, you know, uh, this is only going to sell above 37 K, then it's not gonna, it's not going to make the price go below 36. Okay. All it does is stop a movement. All it can do is stop or contain a movement. Okay. And you can see that if the price turns up and there are a lot of limit orders above, it does contain that move up. Okay. Even if a lot of people are trying to sell at market, it contains that move up. All right. The main nuance that this book presents, and I think is very interesting, is that, is that limit orders cannot just cannot move price. So an upper movement of the price can only be given by active entry of buyers. So people buying at market or executing stop losses for short positions. Okay. And the contrary reasoning goes for going down. Okay. So for pricing, to, for price to move downwards, it has to be a stop loss of a long position, or 
it has to be a market short order all right okay so yeah um when there is lack of interest in one side it can usually facilitate that the price goes up because you know when there in usual market conditions there are a lot of limit orders both below and above the price but if the like the limit orders are like uh, removed from the order book you know if the market maker just removes his limit orders from above the price then what happens is that move up becomes significantly easier okay and that usually translates into net buying pressure even with with reduced volume okay and that is why sometimes we can see price going going up without uh, more volume or price going down without more volume okay that is usually because of like selling orders being removed or just a lack of interest okay so yeah um regardless uh, as the book you know author uh, just tells us here this is a very nice conclusion regardless of the origin of the purchase or sale order the result is that liquidity is uh, added to the market and this is what's really important okay we have to look at volume to see where price was negotiated and volume is one of the most important tools we can look at when trading a lot of people ignore it okay but if i may say so myself um volume was the main tool that i used when i predicted just last sunday that bitcoin was going to go up to about 40k and then down to 35 to 50. I, and, and I did this based on the volume profile, okay? So, you know, I just don't want to flatter myself too much, but volume can be very important. And this is why the book author considers Wyckoff methodology to be really sod solid. And I consider it is very useful too, because it's it goes beyond just analyzing price patterns. It, go it goes to understanding why the volume is being traded, why people are putting and getting money out of the market, okay? So, yeah. If, if you just take, you know, a couple ideas from this video, I would say that the first one is distribution is large traders just dumping their stocks in retail traders, okay? Second, limit orders by themselves cannot make a price movement, okay? We need market orders, we need aggressive participants into the market. And third, um, volume is really important and you should pay attention to it and try to think why volume is looking like the way it's looking okay so yeah um i think this was enough for a single video i don't want to get you know into a 30 minute class and so that everyone watches like five minutes and gets out at the end i want to make these videos short so we can follow along and we can learn all together okay if you want to sign up for the crypto garden you can just go to the cryptogarden.io and you can sign up. We'll do a Wyckoff 2.0 course that looks a little bit more into volume profile. But this Wyckoff, this, this first Wyckoff uh, course will be completely f free here on the Crypto Garden uh, YouTube channel. All right. So, yeah, you can join the garden to just have access to more content and to support uh, the job of all of the creators for the crypto garden okay so that being said i think this is a good time to say goodbye